Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 Audi RS3. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of my most anticipated cars of the year of 2022. Um, I've been looking forward to driving one of these for ages. I've never driven an RS3, even the previous generation, I never got a chance to get behind the wheel of, but we have a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline five cylinder. And if you know me, I'm a bit of a five cylinder fanatic. That's made it to a seven speed dual clutch transmission, super quick shifts, pretty ideal drivetrain. We drove the Audi S3 earlier this year over the winter, and I absolutely fell in love with that car. It was really nice. Of course, that has the two liter turbo, the older Haldex all wheel drive system. This has the updated uh, torque vectoring rear differential. So it can kind of put all of its power to one side or the other side, and it can, I think, torque split up to 50% maximum to the rear still. Let's walk you around this new Audi RS3. We'll show you what it looks like inside and out. Inside, it actually looks pretty identical to the Audi S3. Starting price on this is about $59,000. This RS3 has a couple options. It has the technology package for $2,700, the sport exhaust system for $1,000. Still kind of quiet if I'm being honest and it has the black optic package, which blacks out some things on the exterior. Let's walk you around this and show you what that looks like. This is painted in Kimura gray, which I think is a super sleek looking color. We've blacked out 19 inch wheels wrapped in Pirelli P0 tires. We are not on the Trofeos today, though I'm sure we'll get a chance to drive an RS3 on Trofeos on track at some point here soon. Steel brakes. Blacked out Audi badge up front. That's part of the optic package. Personally, I kind of like the silver badge. Adds a little bit of contrast to that front end, which is mostly just blacked out grill. I've always liked the packaging of the RS3, the S3. It's kind of the ideal size. Decent sized trunk back here too. Got your 12 volt battery back there. No room for a spare, unfortunately. Gotta be careful on these 19s. Back seats are a little bit more spacious in this newest generation of A3 S3 RS3. I'm five foot 10, seated behind myself. I'm pretty comfortable back here. It's kind of cozy, but I don't mind it. We get rear vents, a little bit of climate control, hot, cold. Nice looking armrest. The materials, the leather, everything in this RS3 feels very nice. Though I've got to say, I'm a bit disappointed that there isn't that much of a difference between this RS3 and the S3's interior. I was expecting just a little bit more pizzazz, a little bit more specialness, maybe some extra Alcantara or carbon fiber accents, or you know, some extra trimming here and there. For the most part though, this is still a very, very nice interior. Lots of buttons, great functionality and integration of the tech. Um, overall, Audi is killing it with their interiors these days, and this RS3 follows suit. We have super wide front fenders here. I love this piece, kind of looks like an old school Audi box flare. And we actually get wider tires up front. These are 265 30R19s, and then the rear, we have 245 35R19s. That's to kind of mitigate some understeer, which is interesting. Audi made a similar decision with the previous generation RS3, and it didn't work out as well as it does in this one. The trick all-wheel drive system really helps eliminate all the understeer that this car inherently has. There's that 2.5 liter turbocharged five cylinder. That is the heart of this car. It sounds fantastic. It pulls like crazy. A little bit of turbo lag, but we'll talk about that more when we get on the road. We have 401 horsepower. It's rated for about 20 miles to the gallon in the city, 29 on the highway. So actually still reasonably fuel efficient. Driving it this week, uh, just kind of cruising around town, I've been averaging around, I don't know, 25 to 29 miles to the gallon, depending on my highway city split. Uh, pretty easy, I think, to get around 30 MPG in this car. When you first start it up, it'll say RS3 in the headlights here. If you unlock the car and the lights need to turn on, that's kind of a neat little party trick. We're just gonna get you some first impressions on this RS3 this week. I've spent limited time in this. 
only a couple days behind the wheel. Let's walk you through this interior really quickly. Really nice looking seats, very comfortable. Classic crumb collector right here. A little bit of a carbon weave material there. You've got some ambient lighting right here. Nice and responsive touchscreen. We get wireless, CarPlay, Android Auto, all that good stuff. Uh, nice big screen. You've got some quick access buttons right here, which I really like. That's always nice. You can go in and see an RS monitor, which will show you all of your temperatures, engine oil, coolant, transmission fluid, and you can always go into Audi Drive Select where you can see all of your drive modes. So you've got the options between comfort, auto, dynamic. You can hear the exhaust open up just a little bit there. And then there are these settings, RS Individual, RS Performance, which is kind of the most hardcore drive mode, and then RS Torque Rear, which will turn off ESC, and it's basically drift mode. So it'll kind of overpower that outside rear wheel and slide you around the corner just a little bit. We'll test that some today. We're going to start off probably in auto, and then we'll ramp things up you also get this quick control button here that can take you through RS Individual and RS Performance modes. Kind of like the M button on M cars, uh, very useful. You have to go into this setting specifically for RS Torque Rear or the Drift mode. You've also got a Drive Select button down here, traction control off, parking sensors, heated seats, great physical climate control switches. Everything just has a really nice tactility and feel to it little shifter down here kind of your classic new VW Audi Porsche shifter um, it's okay I'm not the biggest fan of this while I've been driving this car this week I did kind of wish for some type of way to shift gears manually without just using the paddles these paddles are set pretty inboard and sometimes they're a little bit hard to reach if you're kind of hand over hand with this car or really hustling it parking brakes right down here you got a little cigarette lighter charge port a little bit of storage there too um, You've got some cheaper plastics in this interior. Uh, right down here, right here on the door panels, the dash. So, you know, for your $60,000, $65,000, there is a little bit of, uh, you know, disappointing materials here. But overall, I would say this interior feels very high quality uh, for what it is and what its competitors are offering too. So I think overall, Audi's done a pretty nice job here. We have this fully digital gauge cluster. You can choose between one of a couple different views. You can see your navigation. You can see a bunch of information. It's kind of information overload. I think it's a little bit too much. You can also select this reduced display, which will put everything away, but you have to do that every time you drive the car if you want that reduced display. So we'll probably just leave it on this. And then of course the gauges also change when you put it into RS performance and RS individual mode. So your rev counter shifts a little bit and uh, you get a bunch of warning messages and then you can see a little G meter here on the left or tire pressures, which is kind of cool. You can see your peak Gs. Let's see here, trip computer, lap times, lap, statistics, sport displays are kind of fun. Let's reset our G values and see what we hit on our drive today. It's about 61 degrees Fahrenheit, so a little bit of a chilly morning, but good boost weather, and we should have a pretty good drive on our hands. Um, let's see, RS Individual, I have set to Sport Torque Splitter, Sport Drive, Balanced Suspension, Sport Steering. Steering's pretty light in this RS3, so I like the stiffer settings. Loudest engine sound, and ESC is on. And then for RS Performance, we're going full, full Monty. We're going everything in stiff. So we'll just start off in auto, see what this is like to kind of daily drive and cruise around in, and then we will uh, ramp it up from there. Okay, off we go. five-cylinder 
warbling along there. Nice noises from the engine. Ride quality in this RS3 is excellent. We have gone back to adaptive suspension instead of the magnetic dampers that we had in the previous generation RS3. And uh, the settings are pretty conservative. Comfort is almost floaty. Normal is a pretty nice balanced setting and dynamic stiffens things up a little bit, but it's never harsh. It's never too uh, firm. As a result, ride quality is great. It's a really nice daily. It's very comfortable. I heard the previous gen RS3 was a little bit on the stiffer side. There, I have no complaints at all with the ride quality in this RS3. It is really nice, even on these larger 19 inch wheels. We put things into dynamic, and that shifts our transmission into S mode, which is kind of the sport setting for the dual clutch. It'll keep our revs a little bit higher that five cylinder just a bit better and when you hit the paddles it'll shift you into manual control Buzzkill with this semi truck on this entrance ramp, but we'll be back. It is quick. 401 horsepower goes a long way in this car. It is an engine that likes to rev out. Redline is 7,000 RPM. You have lots of control with this seven speed dual clutch really plays a wonderful song. I love the way this five cylinder sounds. If I had one complaint, it's a little quiet. Even with the sport exhaust, I wish this made a few more special noises, had a little bit more drama to it. It's a bit, eh, it's a bit maybe just bland and vanilla for a turbocharged five cylinder. For the power that this puts out, it's a little bit conservative. I feel like the S3 had a little bit more drama to its sound, and that was a two liter turbo that was doing its best impression of a five cylinder. Still, not mad that we get this car in the United States, and we have the option to choose this engine. I wish Audi put this motor in a lot of their other vehicles. I'd love to see this in just about anything with an S badge on it. All right, let's go into, eh, we'll leave it in S performance here. This is a pretty fun mode. Uh, you really only start to appreciate this car when you push it. Driving it around normally in auto mode or even dynamic mode, it just feels like a regular Audi A3 or S3, and it kind of sounds about the same too. Uh, you don't really start to appreciate this turbo five cylinder until you're really hustling it. And there is a lot of power here. So you gotta get, you have to be careful. You have to be aware of what you're doing and how fast you're going because it's pretty easy to see some pretty big numbers on that speedometer. All right, around we go. Has Audi eliminated all the understeer? Well, not really, but... On throttle they have. <laughs> Whoa. All right, we'll settle down here. Put us into auto mode flip on our visor, engage cruise control. We get a nice steering assistance system in this car. Adaptive cruise, we can easily change our following distance with this toggle switch down here. 
skip two and a half mile an hour increments. It's a pretty nice control for uh, changing your speed. On the highway, comfortable, quiet, plenty of space in the front seats here. This Bang & Olufsen sound system is pretty decent too, no complaints there. There's a little bit of a delay with this powertrain when you get into the power. You're making a pass, there's some turbo lag, there's some kind of wait time for the seven speed dual clutch to downshift. About a second, but then it takes off and you are set. Paddle shifters are pretty responsive. I mean, really, I'm not really noticing any differences in this dual clutch's performance compared to the S3. Like I said earlier, unless if you're absolutely hammering this car, this actually feels exactly like an S3. There is a little bit less torque here down low. So this engine really only wakes up above 3000 RPM and there is quite a bit of turbo lag. So while we're making some comparisons to the S3, let's talk about the two liter turbo versus this 2.5 inline five turbo. I will say, admittedly, I kind of prefer driving the S3 around normally more than this RS3. There's a bit of a strange delay in shifts sometimes. There's not a lot of torque below 3000 RPM in this RS3. And when you're just driving it around normally, there's kind of a weird delay between gears as boost builds and then completely falls off when you shift and then it goes into the next gear and needs to build again. cylinder just makes a symphony of sounds even though I wish it were a little bit louder so going back to what I was talking about earlier um, the 2 liter turbo has a bit more torque down low and it's a bit more responsive of a turbo and as a result I think it's actually a little bit better to drive more of the time than this 2.5 liter because it kind of maintains that torque between shifts this 2.5 turbo falls off every time it shifts gear, and there's a little bit of a weird lurch. And uh, unless if you're controlling the gears yourself or hammering around in S mode, it's kind of a, a weird driving experience. You either feel like you're going a little bit too slow, or if you get into it, you're flying around and you're speeding everywhere. Maybe a tune would fix that. Uh, you know what would fix that is a manual transmission and I really 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 wish Audi would offer this with a manual but I think those days have passed so I I do really like this engine and transmission combination but that is a big complaint after driving this all week is as a in daily situations 90% of the time when you're driving this RS3 I actually prefer the way the S3 drives and uh, the way the S3 sounds is actually really similar to this RS3. And I don't know if you're really getting the extra enjoyment out of this RS3 until you really start to push it. So when you're making your purchasing decisions, if you want an RS3, go get one, because this is probably last of breed. It's a very special car. It's got a very special engine. It's super quick, super capable. This, this all-wheel drive system is really revolutionary for an Audi. It's miles better than the standard Haldex in the S3. But as a daily, as a car, I don't really know if it's that much better than the S3 90% of the time. That extra 10% when you're really hustling, if you take this out to the track, if you're doing canyon runs, if you're really pushing this car, it's a much better vehicle than the S3. But the rest of the time, I think the S3 kind of wins out. 
which is a bit strange to say and, and kind of a surprise to me this week. So anyway, take that as you will. These are just some first impressions in this car this week, but uh, I have been a little bit underwhelmed with this RS3 in normal driving. But that said, on the contrary, I've been very impressed with it when it is uh, is pushed. And the harder you push it, the better it gets. So that's a great that's a mark of a great sports sedan. Um, let's go drive some more roads, suss this out. Maybe we'll try RS Torque rear and see how that handles. ESC off. We'll have some fun with this thing. <laughs> we also get launch control. It's absolutely brutal. test that out here. Under four seconds to 60. Wow. In manual mode, this seven speed dual clutch and this engine are just a joy. All right, so RS Torque rear, very little understeer now, completely changed the character of this car turn in you can feel that rear axle just kind of rotating us in and on power smooth power out it feels a little bit like the focus rs where it's almost overdriving those rear wheels but it's doing trick stuff with that rear axle and it really works well it does seem to wonder a little bit it's almost like it's torque steering a little bit from the rear when it's trying to figure out that power distribution it's not necessarily a drive mode that I'd want to have engaged all the time, but it does reduce understeer in a very interesting way, and uh, it's kind of a cool sensation behind the wheel. Alright, back into S mode here, auto. Let's see what it does. Yeah, very neutral, but again, just a little bit of wondering on the road. It's interesting. ramp up here. Gosh, that launch control was just insane. Maintains boost between shifts, really kind of drags the clutch a little bit between gears. Absolutely brutal off the line. I think we had this wheel spin from all four tires. This RS Torque rear mode is fun, really fun. <laughs> wow. I think it's just kind of a setting for hooning around a little bit. Because of that wandering around, it's not something I'd want to be driving in all the time. It's a bit disconcerting, but it does a fantastic job getting this RS3 rotated around a corner. RS Performance is also supposed to do the same thing, but it really only gets this car rotated on power. Off power, you're seeing a little bit more understeer out of this car, which is understandable. One thing I do like is you can put this car in individual mode, put your transmission into drive so you're not sitting at higher revs all the time, and you can select how stiff you want your suspension, how 
heavy you want your steering, engine response, all that good stuff. And it's kind of the best of all worlds. There are so many different drive modes and settings and options to set up this RS3 that it can get a little bit overwhelming and sometimes it feels like you're in a bit of a decision paralysis. But this RS individual mode, you can just kind of figure out your favorite settings, tailor everything, a couple button presses and you're there, I think is probably my drive mode of choice. I'm not crazy about this gauge cluster with this Star Wars style rev counter. Um, it's just kind of a little bit counterintuitive to read. I, I do really miss Audi's old physical gauges. The tack, the Speedo, they were so clear, so sharp, so easy to read. It was like a beautiful watch face, beautiful chronometer. It was so, so cool and really high quality, just nice to, nice to view. And, you know, these new fully digital gauge clusters are all the rage, but look at all the crap that's on the screen. It's, it's so much information. It's, it's too much. I've been putting this into reduced display a lot this week, and it seems to kind of calm my mind a little bit, but I don't know. I think, I think we're going a little overboard with some of these digital displays. Keep it simple, guys. Keep it simple. There's no denying that this thing is properly quick. So, how can we sum things up? Honestly, it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me, this RS3. I was expecting more. I went into this car this week with really high expectations, and maybe that's where I went wrong. But there are some things that I'm a little bit disappointed with in this car. I, I don't like daily driving it as much as I did the S3. I absolutely love that car. And when you're just cruising around in this thing, it's a bit underwhelming. It's a bit dull. It's a bit normal and pedestrian. It kind of just feels like an Audi A3. And it only takes really hammering this thing around to appreciate its finer points. The rest of the time, it just doesn't feel that special, which is unfortunate. Maybe a tune, an exhaust, a little bit of aftermarket massaging would solve that. Um, I think part of that is sound. I want to be able to hear this RS3 more. And to do that, you got to put it into S mode. And the transmission does a great job shifting, but you're always sitting at like 3,000 RPM. And um, I don't know, that just kind of feels wasteful to me sometimes. <laughs> but maybe that's what you got to do. If you want your special driving experience in your RS3, you kind of got to you gotta pay to play. will hold gears. RS Torque Rear Mode is cool. It's a bit of a gimmick maybe um, because it really only works to kind of get this car rotated really well and the rest of the time it's doing weird things in a straight line. It's, it's almost like it's torque steering on throttle uh, and it's trying to get that power distributed in a very strange way. Um, I think Audi just needs to do a little bit more refinement to some of these systems. I would like to see them tweak the power band a little bit. I'd like to see a little bit more torque down low. And I think some of the problem here is they made the S3 so good that I don't know how much better this RS3 really is more, most of the time. When you're pushing it, yes. it absolutely kills it around a corner and in a straight line this thing just absolutely hauls it is so fast makes a great sound but if you watch my s3 video it really doesn't sound that much different from that car with all the pipe and engine sounds and stuff for a sport exhaust i don't really hear much don't hear much going on i hear some engine sound from up front not really a whole lot coming out of the rear. There is definitely a valve in there, but I think with all of the new emissions restrictions, uh, this RS3 is a bit neutered when it comes to noise, unfortunately. It does sound phenomenal, though. I just wish it had more drama to it.
it's really only fun to drive in manual mode when you're shifting yourself. S mode helps. When you just got it in normal D, uh, it's just kind of doing the fuel economy run everywhere. There's something in here in the door panel sliding forward and backward. Maybe it's a clip that fell out. It's been a little bit strange to listen to all week. So overall, there are some really nice improvements with this RS3. I love the idea of this car. I love this five-cylinder engine. It's the, I think it's the only car that offers a five-cylinder anymore. And it just reminds me of my first car. I had a Volvo 50. It was a inline five-cylinder. It sounded like this. It made all the right noises, but this has power, a great transmission. It revs to seven grand, and it does all the things to satisfy my five-cylinder craving. I love that about this RS3. So anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the RS3. Um, not the rave review I was expecting on this car. I need to spend some more time with it. I would love to test this on the Trofeo R tires and get it out on track because I think that's really where this is going to shine. Um, you've got some amazing new tech here that really can only be exploited at the limit. And uh, I like seeing Audis eliminating understeer. We first saw it in the new RS6 with its four-wheel steering system. And that was an amazing car. Audi let us take that out at M1 Concours, and it actually did really well for a 5,000-pound station wagon. And it's cool to see this RS3 kind of follow suit and reducing that understeer, making a little bit more of a dynamic driving experience. There's some things that I really, really like about this RS3. The steering is phenomenal. It really has a great amount of feel to it. There's a nice lightness here. Um, even in dynamic mode, it's weightiest setting. It's not too hefty. It's not too under assisted or doesn't feel artificial. Um, you kind of feel the revs and the vibration from the engine through the rim. Adds a little bit of tactility to the driving experience. Otherwise, this is a really solid daily. Don't get me wrong. It does everything so well, almost too well. And Chris Brower said that after driving this first few days. He's like, it's almost too good. I wish it were a little worse in some ways <laughs> so that it would be better. I think it I think it needs just a little bit more personality, this RS3. So if you're getting one of these, you're probably going to go visit APR for a tune, maybe an exhaust somewhere too. I think a lot of owners aren't going to keep these stock. And I think that's where you get the most out of this car is, is with a little bit of aftermarket massaging. From the factory, this is a pretty darn good effort, but it just needs that little bit extra flavor. And uh, sometimes that's the case with Volkswagen Audi products. And and after that, they're in they're pretty much perfect. So anyway, guys, we'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in this video, but um, there's some first impressions on the 2022 Audi RS3. Big thanks to Audi for letting us have a go on this this week. Can't wait to tech, take it out on track someday and test it on those Trofeo R tires because that is going to be a uh, an absolute treat. Let's see here. As far as G values, we hit 1.16 maximum G. And we hit 1.06 G on acceleration. Wow. Um, I don't doubt it. That launch control was insane. Cool. All right. That's it for this one. We'll see you guys later. Take care. Your mobile device is still in the vehicle. Yes. Thank you.
brakes have great bite, really nice linear pedal feel. still a little bit of understeer here. They haven't completely eliminated it, but they've done a good job reducing it. 